Hi, I'm Helper Wesley. I'm the creator of these games. On this YouTube channel, I make weekly devlogs and talk about all things game dev. If that sounds like something you'd like to watch, then click that subscribe button. Let's get into the devlog. Now this is the last devlog of the year, so I'll be talking about my thoughts on what's happened this year at the end of the video. But let's get into the game dev stuff first. So through some playtesting, I found out that my game's RNG caused a lot of issues. Somebody actually got stuck in a single linear hallway and they couldn't get out. Which meant they couldn't get any resources and they were just stuck and couldn't play the game basically. I'd considered making the RNG a little less random, but regardless of what I thought up, resources would still spawn in places that they couldn't reach. Which sucks. So I decided to add a bomb. Simple, easy, bomb. You can put it wherever you want to in the game, and it'll blow up the wall and the ceiling and the floor, whatever is within the blast radius. And that way if you see something you want to get to, or see an area that's really opened up and you'd like to go explore that area, you can take the bomb, drop it down, and there you go. I started out trying to make it so that you can throw the bomb in a direction. I tried a ton of different things. Firstly I tried just giving it a force when you're pressing the button in that direction, but that didn't work out. I originally gave it the platform behavior so it would have gravity, but that meant when it's not being controlled, its reluctance and deceleration to movement applied to it, which meant the moment you threw it, nothing really happened. So that was no good. I tried to add this to all the resources, just so that you'd be able to do things like throw it down holes or throw it a distance to get it to fall down a hole to get it to land in the train, but that didn't really work out. No matter what I tried, I couldn't quite make it work the way I wanted it to. So I scrapped that idea and decided to make the explosions bigger. Make them big enough that when you lay it on the ground, it'll hit the ceiling. So if you're trying to go up or down or sideways, the explosion was big enough to take out the area that you want to get to. So now that I was well and defeated, I went off to make the bomb. Just a very basic bomb. Um, I set it so that these animation frames would play at a certain duration, and then when the animations were finished, then it would blow up. So you'd have the wick of the bomb burn away until it reaches the bomb and then blows up. And I kind of like this because it means that because the lit end of the wick is a different color, even when you lay it somewhere and it's not in the light, you can still see the wick burning, which is kind of nice. Then of course I had to do some animation things, like make the bomb rotate when the character rotates. So if you're looking one direction or the other direction, when you turn, the bomb turns as well. And then add the explosion effect. I did this using the particle system in GDevelop. I, it's just a big circle that spawns at the point of the explosion. And because the RNG of the map is set up so that different animations allow you to pass through different parts of the scene, uh, when the bomb blows up, it's not blowing up or deleting any walls or spaces. It's changing the animation. Because if it deleted that piece, then it wouldn't hit the randomizer at the end, which means it wouldn't repeat and would mean that every time you blew up a bomb, it would permanently destroy that segment of the RNG map. So in order to achieve this, I had to track where the bomb was when it blew up, so I could tell where it was in relation to the piece that's being blown up. So for the walls, if it's below or above the wall, we'll determine whether or not the animation changes to the half wall on the bottom or the half wall on the top. Or at least that was the plan. My brain for some reason didn't really figure out how this was supposed to work properly, so I had a whole lot of trouble with that. I don't know what it was about it, but it, I couldn't wrap my head around where or what point along the beam it, the bomb is supposed to be for its explosion to either change the animation to one side, the other, or destroy the whole beam. But of course this was just me having a mental block and once I figured it out, it was just a straightforward thing to fix. So now that's in the game. You can take a bomb from the train and go blow up any section of the map you want. And this will allow players to get to sections that would have otherwise been locked off. The bombs will be crafted by the character that's in the train, and that way the bombs are a limited resource that you don't want to use constantly because it uses up your resources, but you'll use them often enough to get to other resources because they'll be more valuable than the bomb itself, if that makes sense. And because this week's focus was new mechanics and tasks within the train, I decided to go on next to work on the hunger and stress bars. And that began with trying to figure out which square out of my prototyping tools looked the most like food. Like was it orange? Was it green? Was it red? Anyhow, 
Putting those two bars in was pretty straightforward. It was basically the same thing I did for the heat bar for the furnace at the top of the screen. It's just the bar itself is a multiple of 100 or 200 in the case of the stress bar. And the width of it decreases based on the ratio of the stat within the global variables. So basically, okay, hold on, let me explain this. The bar is 100 pixels wide and the variable is 100. So every time the variable ticks down one number, the width of the bar decreases by one pixel. Both the hunger and stress tick down once per timer on the bar that's above the screen. I'm thinking about adding a clock later on so that way you can actually watch how long until the next tick happens. And so basically now you can put your character that's in the train, the sun, in the stress idle area that will bring their stress bar back up or I guess reduce stress or their increase their relaxation or something. And then the other one, you can move them over to the cooking station, which means they'll use up the cooking food resource to bring that hunger bar back up. Lots of, lots of little moving parts now with the stats and things. And of course right now it's still kind of a prototype, so none of these things actually will give you a game over, so your characters can starve and still be alive. We'll get around to adding a fail state later in the game. This wasn't a part of my mechanics update, but as I was playing the game, I realized that refueling didn't work. I guess I'd broken it somehow. And what it was was that the the mechanic was working, but the action to update the text to tell me that I ha now have less of that resource, that was broken. So I unexpectedly had to fix that part too. So once I got all these tasks working, I moved on to the city hub scene, or the station hub scene, or whatever the heck it's going to be called scene. And I will be adding a shop there so that you can swap out resources to get the ones that you want. Basically giving up like five of one resource to get three of the one you want. As well as being able to buy food and maybe being able to buy bomb crafting resources. I'm not sure what I'm going to use for that yet. I don't know if it'll be just be the ones that are in the game itself, like the stone, coal, or, or wood. That doesn't make any sense, but maybe I'll just use those. The other shop that's going to be in the whatever the heck it's going to be called area is an upgrade station for the train, so you can upgrade the train as you go and play, play along with the game. This will basically just make each station more efficient at what it's doing, which will hopefully be necessary as I add more enemies and struggles to the game. Before I get into the fact that this is the last devlog for this year, uh, I wanted to ask a question really quick. Between these two ideas, which one sounds better? That ghosts and enemies in this game just die if they run in contact with light? Like is light the thing that kills them? Because that's okay, I think that's, I think that's a good idea. Or I've been debating with this idea myself, are the torches that the character's carrying and then eventually in the hub cities, are those torches pets? Are they the souls of their pets in these torches protecting their owners? I have it in my head that you could create a really cool story in this game by making the narrator or driving viewpoint of the, of the characters be from their old cat that's died and now is in the torch protecting them from all the enemies. I don't know, that might just be a little bit too convoluted. It might be simpler to just go with the light being the thing that kills them. I'm curious to know what you think about it. But now to get into the fact that this is my last devlog for 2020. Of course 2020 sucked, but for my little corner of the internet, it was pretty nice actually. I've met some really cool people, and I'm genuinely surprised by just how great everybody's been within the game dev community. The very first comment I ever received on any game I've ever posted was, I would comment on your game, but I don't want to put in more effort than you did. So that put my expectations real low. Like, I assumed this was going to be the normal thing, I was going to have to put up with people berating me all the time, and it was just going to get worse. But honestly, you guys have been really great. Like, the game dev community and the people that kind of hover around the game dev space have just been really nice and helpful, and it's really awesome to be a part of. Anyhow, that's what I got done this week. If you enjoyed that devlog, you know, consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to talk to me personally, the link to our Discord is down below. It's a pretty chill place to hang out and talk game dev. And if you decide to click on that link, then I guess I'll see you there.